But here, Top have a chance to correct their routing. And the analyst test seems like they believe in them. One of the big mistakes I think Gom made in the first game, they gave over the Yumi, which is banned out this time, but they also gave over Knight's Ari, which was most played all of summer, absolutely destroyed them on it. This time around though, Jackie Love and Mark instantly going with the Lucian Nami and Anther. Oh! We got a card this! So you guys all cheer. I actually hate jungle card this as a jungler because it's, Why? Just, it's just turbo farm mode. Yeah. It's great. It's spamming it's R. Great. All right, we'll see if he goes first strike uh, and does he the, spam, the spam R for first strike, buddy. It, strategy as it well. It means I have an excuse for not ganking for my lanes. Oh, sorry, bro, I'm scaling. Oh, look at this. Well, if DS lock this in, then top are not scaling. Top are smashing. Oh, top wants to smash this game early, all right. Lucian Nami plus Renekton here already instantly. And I do think one of the issues that you can run into with the jungle Carthus, uh, even though I, I'm going to completely ignore your comments regarding <laughs> yeah. playstyle, it's a great the playstyle. No skill it farm feels champ really Renekton. good to just see the creep <laughs> numbers go up. Um, but the important thing is that you do need either something that could provide cryo, so you have help in case you do get invaded. And I would not be surprised to see Gam either try to make sure that they get a prio matchup in mid as well, or at the very least, pinch some of the more aggressive junglers so Tian can go to ham onto Levi. Yeah, difficult thing to them is they're they're already facing aggressive two lanes here yeah. for top, and then you're trying to get prio versus Knight. So good luck with that. We'll see about the matchup though. Uh, banning away some of the yeah. Kalista supports, the Amumu band away. Expect uh, more engaged supports here to follow. Meanwhile, Gam trying to control the threat that is Knight. Good luck with that one. Uh, yeah. That's going to be a, a tough call here because honestly, it feels like everyone is having a pretty good time in the mid lane up against Katie, sadly. And Knight himself, obviously, pretty incredible. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe they followed up with the RE. Uh, there's just so many things you have to be worried about. Knight is also one of the best Silas players in the entire world. Um, so, a lot of threats that could come out there. We'll see about uh, the blind that comes first. Second band is the Nautilus, of course. Those two engaged supports we talked about taken away from the Callista. And you're setting yourself up very nicely. If you just pick up a jungler for TN, you can go a number of different directions. Graves, I think, is the most obvious one. Uh, and then you can get that counter pick for Knight. Yeah, they, they're more scared of the Nidalee because of the Renekton stun. Yeah. Uh, I have to I have to uh, guess, but I would. I am more scared of Graves just in yeah. Nidalee here. I think that Knight is happy to be the solo AP on a team. Uh, they're fine locking up everybody else on AD. Uh, but it does mean Gam picking up a tank here will be super effective. Can stack the AD. Knight uh, will be left as the only solo, uh, theoretically, AP there for top. It is interesting that TES threw two support tank fans when we just saw Kalista set as the lane together. Obviously, it is a flex, right? It can go anywhere. Uh, so the possibility, and indeed, this time it is moved around as Kalista goes in the bottom lane. Yeah, and I think the real reason is because they have the Renekton. They're like, ah, that's one of the good matchups. Uh, they will probably want this. Oh, there's that Silas. It's a Silas. His most played is Ari. Last time, uh, Knight smashed them with the Ari. He got resets with the Yumi on top of him. Blasted Gam almost single-handedly. And a single misposition now against this composition from top esports means certain death, right? The amount of setup that you have available with both Ari and Renekton, if someone does step out of line, is really hard. On the flip side, I actually love the game composition. I think that if you look at both the amount of diversity and damage that they have, their later team fights, and the fact that they have a Renata against what is effectively a lot of short range characters on the other hand, yeah. there is an angle there. The problem is uh, the early game for Gams, or for Gam, have not been very good. And uh, I expect that to continue <laughs> looking at the top esports draft here. Uh, it'll be exciting to watch for, though. We'll see what they can get going on. Obviously, Levi is going to be trying to power clear. Uh, I think you can do six camps in under 315 if you're doing it pretty well. Yeah. I hope we get to actually watch him do the early clear. There's a bunch of, like, oh, nerdy. You can... There's some nerdy. Uh, it's really you on. You get it. Themselves onto some of those rift for our second game of the day. All right. Let's see if there is another one of the level one invades, because invading towards the Karthus early to get vision on the path for Karthus could be greatly beneficial for TES, for, uh, for TN here in his efforts in trying to punish this jungle. And overall so far, no real invades being shown, only some early vision secured. And do note, is the first strike, Futures Market and Ultimate Hunter, so 
expect Levi to be pressing that R button a whole lot. Yeah, get a decent amount of money there with the first strike. Also, since uh, Top do have fairly squishy laners here, could set themselves up uh, for some aggressive plays. Callista Renata bottom lane, you mentioned, as well as the set in mid lane. Uh, big reason warding off Knight going for that Silas, because the Silas into the set, definitely a really rough matchup early on, but uh, Ari a much easier time at punishing. Speaking of the Ari first strike on her as well, it's a ranged melee matchup, so be able to pretty easily get the get the harass on cooldown and get some all out of it, can farm the lane itself. This game, I believe we're not spotted walking up here. And of course, BA would love to get a nice little handshake. Oh, dueling sweepers. And says, ah, I see some <laughs> W, first strike, six gold, four gold. Cashes in first. Top side start for both junglers as well, so we will be clearing down towards this bottom side. Of course, the volatile setup here. Mid lane as well, definitely a possibility, but definitely expect some looks towards the invades. Tien finishing up on the red buff, coming down to the bottom side, skipping his Krugs. So we'll see if he does go for uh, the bottom side invade, seeing as how the control or the uh, trinket wards are Last for the handshake. Ignite is on after the cleanse, though. BA should not die to this one. But they're going to get Jack to cleanse and get away. Big thing here is even if you don't get the kill, as long as Gam have priority, they can ensure that at the very least, Levi should be able to get a full clear off. We can see the same thing from Katie, who has been aggressively using his health bar in an attempt to make sure that Knight can't move out of that lane, can't roam, because once you get to the level six, the Carfus gets a much easier time and we'll be able to just rapidly accelerate the pace of the game. If on five camps already onto the Krugs as it is, we'll see when the 24 CS mark hits. That's when he's gotten the full clear done. So big Krug, middle Krug, dying pretty soon. I'm just, I just want another timer. That's the part that matters to me. He's at 22. Oh. He's at 22, 301. One more. 302, 302. 302 for the full clear on the jungle. And he's easily going to be at this bottom scuttle in time. He's too early. You get a trinket ward down. That's nice. You get to queue for a control ward. You better be and, early if you're and playing he saved Karfus, second, okay? I know, and he saved second spice, you can break <laughs> off the shell. Kobe, which Karfus hurt you? <laughs> what what happened, man? All Hold on, Grace, mid Grace lane. mid, though. Grace mid, though, is the problem. So, like, yeah, he's covering the bot lane plush, but the thing is, uh, though, Grace oh. snuck in already, so Katie could be charmed, gets away through the minions, will he have to flash it? And actually, it hit the minion. Knight was still to catch me next to him when he put the charm down, so Katie did not actually have to flash, but he's out both summoners now. Yeah, it means a lot here, though, for this matchup. No flash, no ghost. Both summoners blown for Katie. So very vulnerable to more passes. And that is the go ahead signal for Tien to start looking uh, to go for these invades. He goes over, he props, uh, pops the Scryer's Bloom, gets the exact timer for these camps for blue buff and for wolf camps uh, for him for second time. Knows Karth has started on that top side of the map should be easy. So Levi can be very happy to help here. Picks up a Fiendish Condex on his first back. Yep. And this is also not the set support that we saw in the previous game, who is running Hex Flash, who is going for the utility tree. Instead, he is going for a much more aggressive Brawly style, has the Conqueror, has Resolve as well. But as a result, does mean that the loss of your Flash actually gonna hurt way more than we saw in the previous game. Levi now heading towards his second clear, and thus far, Gam able to, at the very least, keep that car for safe, but I do think the test composition still has an incredible amount of power when they get first to an objective between the Renekton stun and the charm, so yep. don't think it's the end of the world for them to play it a little bit slower up until those ultimates are available. I just like that part of Levi's path was, okay, I recall Fugis Market for a lost chapter, or um, a Fugis Codex. I then poach mid lane and then do my second clear. He's at level five here, so he is off to the races. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, they've got an aggro bot lane, right? Like, you should be able to find your way in for Clis Renata plus Requiem for some kind of big play. That's the hope anyway. Yeah, they remain true to their jungle carry style. Feed the jungle as much as possible. Levi gonna be no exception this game. Graves though, off that reset, because he did the kind of skip Krugs at the beginning, did a late first clear on Krugs, bounced oh. off of Grompier and will be uh, heading back towards the top side of the map where the scuttle is spawning. I feel like Nerves may be getting to the bottom side there because Style did not need to cleanse that. Lucian was busy hitting Farm under his tower. He takes a bubble, but no one's going to hit him. So now down a cleanse is a really big deal because follow through could look very good on that one. Now there's no exhaust, so the cleanse really only ever is going to break bubble, but if you ever land it, a lot of danger. Also means that in any subsequent skirmish, Knight's charm holds a much bigger threat as Levi, you might think, 
that he, he is he's taking time off his camps are down anyway he doesn't care just helps his lane get a reset in and maybe set up for a possible drake in the future yep reset once again go for another full clear baby card this jungle game play. Huge. he's level six nearly a he's play. done it yep yep all right will there be a fight is the question back in the base for his next bit of the items 55 gold doesn't go into uh, deficit spending here as he gets Oh, the play out of Kati. Katie, there we go, gets the ulti, has a shield available soon, but the charm's gonna land from Knight. And can they kill him? They've got the ability to flash fall. The ult could be enough anyway. When's the shield come down, if at all? You've even got a Nami coming around. First blood is in. Doesn't need level six, the Graves is rich. And you know they're coming back mid lane because the cooldown timers here for Ghost and Flash burn from Katie early on. Nice punish from Tien, repeats it. Karthus in the brush though. Gets a slow, gets some Q damage. Ornn is here as well, and he's, he's gonna get a knock up. Will there be a kill is the question. Charm's gonna land, huge damage, flash follow. It's not gonna get all blocked, and Kiaya could be in danger. VA is around. Requiem back in for a bit more. Will they find the knock up for the kills? The question Ignite is on. W, flash auto. Oh! Up with the shield, VA gets the kill. And Gam strike back, they get the extra one here. Lying in wait in the brush. The surprise onto Tien, who had flash forward to get the mid kill. And taking down Knight as well is huge for Gam's hopes. Also mean that more gold goes into the wallet of Levi, who Considering he's the sole AP source on his team, the more gold you can funnel into this Karthus, the harder it will be for top esports to play it out. And here you see, even though he gets taken down relatively early, Kiaya stays alive. And then this handshake from Bia catches him, pulls him back oh. within Karthus range, so they could finish off the damage there uh, tonight with the corpse explosion. So close here, though. Gam able to get the extra couple kills to try and claw back into it. Their tournament hopes rely on this. Meanwhile, yep. Top came into the tournament with such high expectations as LPL number two and need to correct course very, very quickly if they want to get back on track in this group. Uh, at least in this game, they're ahead. A thousand gold up right now at eight minutes in the game. They're decent overall. You got farm leads in Top and bot lane right now. Plus, that kill looks pretty good on Tian. Keep in mind, of course, both Rogue and Gam. Hoping Gam takes that win. Tournament lies versus Rogue getting the uh, pass over TES at that point. Four wins, and TES at one and three couldn't catch them. So hoping for the TES loss is the Rogue camp. Flash stun. Oh, it doesn't get a minion. Mark was only slowed. Somehow the E doesn't tag the caster. Might not have killed him anyway, but he's still flashed down. Ah, yeah. A little bit off there. Not going to be anything dangerous then. Mark had to use his flash, but survives. Don't think they're going to go for. Uh, the extra move here. Kati still has ult. Let's see. Ooh. Really good damage. Should have W shield pops it there, but doesn't block almost any damage. Jack Liv is already kind of disengaging here, but a strange lane as the set Renata playing together. Handshake back. The stun, a good title. And without flash, this should be possible. Ducks back into the tower, and they're going to give it over to Levi. And the kill goes to the Karthus again. This is so big. Levi getting accelerated in this game is an unavoidable source of damage that you don't really want to itemize for. And I'm loving that Top is playing aggressive because they're able to generate very large gold leads due to the amount of plates that they pick up. But you got to walk that fine line. Oh. And, and he had a Dark Seal as well, so three stacks now. And Leandris is done Ooh. for Levi. So next Karthus ultimate here with the first strike is going to leave the burn as well. Let's take another look, though. Again, this was the first time around. Hits the, or hits the handshake. They know they have no flash from the first time around. Able to get on the other side of Mark. Dunk him back this time. The Gale Force of safety from the Lucian, but ultimately pretty good stuff right here. So still a relatively close game. And can Gam get over the line? It's still a 1,000 gold deficit. Like, they make the play, they get the kill. And it's still so much TES game. And it's a combination of the amount of CS that they've been able to pick up as well as their aggressive play. If you look at the plates, obviously now will be some that are picked up here for Gam, making that gold lead a little bit less dire. But overall, top lane, obviously, in that Renekton uh, versus Ornn matchups, going to drop the plates. Wayward looking a lot more comfortable. Hasn't really been part of this game, nor has Kiaya bar that one topside play. Gam picking up an early Ocean Drake, I think buys them a lot of time down the line. And when you're playing Karthus, that's what you want to see. Yep. 
little minor things, two Qs and an auto. Uh, Qs actually have different cast animations, weirdly enough, and so uh, those two Qs and the auto is actually the right pacing, but now we've got a play towards the top side. Yeah, yeah, Tanky on the orb, puts Zulti down. He could be stunned, but with Karthus looking as well, there's not much to be done. Looks like he's going to be able to walk away from all this. The wave goes down, but there's no gank to be had. Yep. Good job there from TS, not actually drawing aggro once the horn is blown. They know it up, oh, that's enough. Cooldown's already been used. Karthus has first strike. He's gonna be very willing to just throw these ultimates. And they just walk their way out. And Tien continues with the jungle pillaging here. Gets the whole blue quadrant taken away from the Karthus. And something we haven't even talked about is that uh, the Karth is also, as we mentioned earlier, has ultimate hunter, already three stacks, which means that Compared to where you could be in terms of uh, timer on your ultimate, there's way less room for top esports to find windows where the Requiem is down. Yeah, that means more first strike. Oh, well. yeah. Keep pressing that R button. Keep pressing that button. More money. Oh, are you going to throw him in? They would like to find a bit more, but of course, Renata does bounce back. Every range champion bounces back. Probably their attack range up close to ulti, and not a range for anything more than that one. Jackie looked pretty easily safe. A lot of ultimates down now. Four gam, no Karthus ultimate, no Kalista ultimate bottom, no Orn on top Man, either. They should take a fight. I know it buys some time, but Mark's still flashless. Oh, we got a lot done there with the CC style. Find himself a kill. Pick up another one and another stack on the Dark Seal. An assist there for the Karthus. Levi also getting more powerful. Cam's clawing their way. They're staying in this one with the Dragon as well to their names. Tien, though, could stop some recalls. And even with some of the lesser scaling on the team, obviously Karthus and Orn skill incredibly, but both the sets and the Kalista can run into some issues, I think are really bolstered by both the leads that Levi has been able to generate, as well as the Renata. Renata is such a good equalizer at allowing aggressive playstyles to work out even later in the game due to bailout power. Yeah, Gam have a huge amount of AoE damage, so if they can actually clump up TES, then they will have huge, huge value later on. Ocean Dragon also helping out uh, the Orn lane quite Ooh, significantly. Orn ult. Hits the wall down. Flash to be burned here. Does he have anything else for it? Though puts the ulti down pretty late on this one, but maybe the knockup's gonna be enough. No, Wayward back on the tower. I'm sorry, he didn't ult the second he saw the flash, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna land it now. Ultimately, Wayward does live. Summoner's down, ulti down. Cross map play. Yep. I think some of the vision was known about this one, as Sai has to run pretty far away. BA. Doesn't have a savior ulti here either. Now a 2v2 in the top side. Levi going to be in danger. Going to flash for a bit of time. Got to be careful. He's out of the tower nearly. Tien, will they find the knockup into the wall? He's going to flash away for it. Levi, though, is out of mana. And the means will go down a huge heal out of Wayward. He's going to be fine. Here comes the set as well. KD trying to make something happen. They did have a possibility of Karthus ult coming down, but oh my God. complete avoidance there from the play from top. So well done. Nobody dies, and oh, Knight gets hit. Good handshake, flashing for more with the red, but his own flash is already down, and he can't get any farther than a Jackie Love. Flash the way to safety. This is so big for top. They avoid both side lane plays. They get the kill even on Karthus, and Knight chunks down the extra turret place before they disappear. Okay, well, kill though. Jackie Love got honey fruit. He's going to be fine. Didn't know that he had found Honey Fruit in the fog. Would have been close to lethal otherwise. Meanwhile, Knight has been working down this mid lane. Turret got the plates already. Knocks down first tower himself. The stun not going to matter. And now we're seeing a very similar picture that we saw with Gam when they faced off against Rogue, which is even though in terms of small early game plays, it's working out. They're getting out skirmished and outplayed on the map. And look at this. Once they bring Tien over, yeah. good flash there from Levi so he doesn't get comboed initially, but up against the wall, Tien's able to get the bounce back, then he flashes away and can deal the damage from range. So no more Karthus Qs come through, nobody in danger of dying to the ultimate. They get the kill, they get out. Yeah, he stayed to fight for some plates, which I understand, one of the gold, sharing it with Kiaya, but his left side camps were up, and ultimately the 2v2 went the way of TES, and you can see a 2,000 gold lead now to the LPL number two. Yeah, and dropping all those stacks off the Dark Seal now too. Right back down to zero now. Graves pulling ahead in CS. Constantly we're seeing Tien move into the jungle as well. These deaths for Karthus also costing him camps. Indeed, red buff gone, Raptor's gone. Tien is doing a really good job actually denying him. I mean, this game started with Levi a level up. It was six to five, but now it's 11 to 10 in Tien's favor. He's taken away so many of the camps that Levi's been there for the ganks. He's gotten the gold, but no rank to Requiem. Actually a pretty important power spike to miss out on. Shares the mid lane turret gold. He's getting money, but not levels. After 13 doesn't matter for Karthus, but getting to 11 is the part that matters, and he's not there. 
Overall, Gam trying to push this lead as far as they can. They do spot Tian on the bot side of the map, so can go more aggressive. Just get two turrets here. Top esports kind of caught off guard and huge win for Gam. Raptor's taken as well, uh, but it's a red dragon being attacked now for TES. Just into fire damage, flame breath. And <laughs> it is a red dragon. It is a red dragon. I realized that I have to kind of like stay with the theming on. We've had so many D&D I dragons. like it. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate the thematic consistency. Yeah, uh, I believe chaotic evil for red dragons. I know they're... I know the chromatic ones are evil, but uh, I don't remember otherwise. I think that's sad for I think dragons. It's chaotic. Maybe you want to be. Well, a, what if you want to be a nice dragon? Then you're a metallic dragon. You could be a gold. What dragon. about for the boss? Well, we got the boss looking for it right now. Ults away, gets out from the charm, and it's going to be some damage out of Jackula, but there's no Lucian CC. Easily able to get behind his minion, stay alive. <laughs> And now it's a flip, because now Gam is actually winning out on the map. They're able to get a topside shove in. Level 11 now hit for Levi. And the gold lead that Top Esports was starting to build up, kind of stabilizing. And do want to reiterate, think that Gam, if they can get to a late game stage <laughs> as a wayward. Glad we're still seeing the emotes of this player, yep. something that he is uh, universally beloved for. Um, is still going to be in a great position. Once that Shadow Flame hits, once Kiaya hits the level 13, 14 mark, starts giving out the ornament, so much free stats. Gonna go the way of Gam, and if Top Esports is not able to pick up those Mountain Drakes, it'll be very tough for them to withstand the amount of damage that Gam have. Yep, Tien now picking up a little bit of magic resistance on this team. That's just about it, though. No Magic Mantle for him. Try and protect against that next very powerful ultimate. Rank 2 coming in for Levi. Uh, if that Shadow Flame does hit as well, it's going to be quite painful for everybody else. Interestingly, avoid Staff Rush out of Night here for a second item. He's, of course, the only meaningful magic damage threat in his team, and I think could actually use health somewhat with cards that's coming down, but doesn't go for the Shadow Flame version. Toppling going to be attacked, though, and this is TES probably finding their third turret of the game. Kiara reads the play, but... The one thing that Taz, have, no matter what the game state is end up going to be, is that if Kiai or Levi Redder at any point goes down, that's the composition from Gam basically falling apart. Uh, just having the uh, Kalista available is not going to be enough, and especially with Levi looking to just build full damage. If Knight or Wayward can get on top of the Karthus, lock him down early, the very least, in a longer fight, you might stand a shot. Yeah, biggest determining factor for the next fight is going to be where it takes place. The terrain could greatly enable Gam, allow them to actually get off this big AoE damage. Uh, but if there's enough space, you know, open in one of these lanes, Top have so much maneuverability, they can easily avoid it. So maybe if Gam can try and carve out a little bit of uh, Fog of War here and funnel them into a jungle pathway, they would love that site. It's also one of the situations as uh, a little bit of a massage there for the set. Yeah, and now CC chain towards the Ornn here as well, losing a lot of his health. I mean, as much as you can onto an Ornn, he will get chunked decently here. Still not onto his own Sunfire, just the Frozen Heart armor stacking against the triple AD, the opposing team. Everyone there even auto attacks these them out, so it makes a lot of sense for the build. And now just stuck under his tower. To go back to your point, Kobe, I actually love when an Elemental Rift actually impacts how teams have to set up around fights. And I think that a Mountain Rift, when you are again, when you are looking to get these big AoE moments, can actually utilize that very, very well as going for an invade here. The red buff there, Jack, of course, doesn't have a smite. This should be a claim for the Gam side. They pull the red back down. Uh, it's going to reset, pull it to the left. Oh, Jian! Jian can be attacked, will be knocked up, but they have the damage. The question, though, slowed down. TP comes in from above, there's Wayward. The flash done to lock him up. Can they kill the Renekton? They're going to dunk him back as Gordrick oh. right now. And they get one, but when they get the rest, the bailout is after the kill. So Style dies on top. And they got a bit more coming on for Knight of the backside. Levi a bit low on mana, still has his ulti. Man have to die before he casts it, though. On the backside is Knight. Already Ord has dropped now as well. And it's Gam forced to run away. The health bar is a bit too high. Jackie Love Chunk. The flash stun. But can there we go? Or can they stop him? And he gets them back for one. Garthus gets the last lap there. They take down one more. It's still a two for three, though, in the favor of Top Esports. And they can continue to push you on the top side of the map. And Knight did so much heavy lifting in that fight, finding the backline axis, able to flank, stay alive throughout the entirety of it. 
and that is the one matchup where I think Gamma struggled the most. Katie in the previous game got put down by Larson. This time around on the set, at least he's able to find the fights in terms of getting actually onto the back line with a CC, but Knight, the amount of damage he was able to put out, incredible. Yeah, Katie had actually a great setup onto Jackie Love when he dumped in and got the pull back onto Jackie to Im immediately get the summoner spells. Uh, second time around though, not quite enough space to work with. Here's how it started out. Tien, very far on the other side, surrounded by enemies, but the teleport from Wayward comes in immediately. Flash over the wall for the knockup. Renekton first target. This is what we're talking about. The dunk from Wayward back towards Jackie so he can get the pullback onto Jackie. Burning down there for Style, though, and we're right back out to more action. Use the damage on a set there's gonna be okay. Nice little pullback on the Wayward, but he's gonna be fine on the Renekton. Pretty tanky. Third during the game is up. No time for the Requiem, though. It's still a good 40 seconds away. This team fight is gonna be very tough for Gam. Yes, they can rend, but it's also a 12,000 health Drake. Katie winning the wings. Wayward yeah, flank. Around as well. The Wayward flank could be absolutely huge. Style has a flash. Here comes the dunk across, and it's a shot. Well, it's gone. That is such a huge pick. 4K health left. You have to believe Gam get the smite. The reset doesn't matter. The red stacks are there, and it's Gam fighting valiantly in the mid game. That's so big, the extra resistances on top of what is already going to be a beefier game esports is so tough for top to fight against. And, and now they've got control of the map here. What can they do with this Solo window? Baron. Bubble delay here for Mark. Knight does not have teleport, so ha has to walk oh. from the fountain back out here. Gam trying yes. to get a little bit of a pick before they have time to respawn, but that's going to be the window. Steel caps in a lot of places. There it is again, the triple AD comp for the TES side. I mean, to be fair, relatively similar for Gam, or not exactly a huge damage threat, but does something. We go back, a bit of a lull state there. The Mountain Drake's stacking up. Very good at dealing with the burst damage you'd see out of a Graves, out of an Ari. Actually, it would matter a lot if Gam gets the soul. Of course, we're pretty far away from that one, and TES still in control scoreboard wise. Yeah, I believe they're going to feel reasonably comfortable. Still no stopwatch in for Knight. But that was that that last fight is exactly what we're talking about, where Gam using the terrain to their advantage. Yeah. Beautiful flank from KD to be able to get the dunk on Knight. They instantly get the pick, they instantly get the kill, and rewards them with an objective. That is that is their pathway back in. Here it is. They see him coming, but it's too late. Knight goes right at him, tries to dash through him. Can't dash through the set. Immediately just overrides him with the dunk there. Into the rest of the team. Lights out. And as a result, Wayward also doesn't have an angle, right? Without the Ari gone, opting into a 4v5. If you lose that, you don't just give up a Mountain Drake, which sure, that's a toughie, but if you also give up the Baron, you might not find yourself an angle back into this game. Right now, at the very least, top esports still hanging in there. If they can find a crucial pick on Levi, for example, while he still doesn't have the flash available, could give them an angle back into this game. So stack the damage possible. Void next on the Levi. No zone. He is not going to hold the front line. Just trying to get the burst damage, basically, hoping everyone else is set up. And he doesn't need to sit there on the front. Wayward on the wings. Award will spot if he comes any closer. Ultimately, he's looking for his play, but it's not going to be there just yet. Kia is still grouped up. Everyone is in the mid lane. Knight's going to be okay. Attempts it doesn't get much. This is exactly where Gam don't want to fight. Look how many angles there are for a top to attack from. Wow. All sides here. Top are just poking at them. It's gonna be really big damage to Katie. Yeah, he's gonna have to try to run away. Looks like Shrelia's gonna make for decent movements there as Levi waits in the wings. But now this means the river is owned by top esports. They play the midwave so well. Wouldn't be surprised if they try an hard force here. Top esports trying to force Gam into making a mistake. Zero vision available around this Baron. Yeah, it's spotted. Trinket. But that's now the only blue trinket on cooldown now. So TES gets a knock down the ward and then go right for the Baron. And it means Gam has Look to play Wayward. it. Yep, Wayward's on the flank. So does Katie find anything useful? Gets away from the bubble. They know the fight is there. He's already ulted. Be careful, Style. He flashes early, gets away. There's a dunk to buy some time, but can they kill backline? Already the ult is in, and that might kill one. Renekton and drops where the health force is so low that TES are forced to run away. But is it chaseable? They could go for mid lane and go for inhibitor Part turret, but spike? they Look want to Levi. play the Yeah, Levi has his own flash to play it. Ooh, this is risky. This Tian is, is there. A risk. Tian can do a lot of damage there. Katie only at 1,000 health. No dunk available. Has a flash for a stun play. And we know Kalis can do a lot of damage here as well. TP! Back in for Knight. Ulti list. The front line pretty tanky, but Style has almost nowhere to go. Has to walk on in. But there's hemmed. They're hemmed in here in the health bars. 
Okay, they have nice. so little to fight with. Shirelli has to disengage, but Knight could find the charm. Sidestepped by Katie. Flash to the wall, but no kill to be had as Knight dodges away. Cam could have gone for mid. They go for Baron and get nothing. And now they're going to lose Baron here. Topper going to teleport away. We're right back at They turn back in. in. Well, they've got to try. Ulti is not up for a little while. Their TP is back in. 8K health. Katie's still waiting. And now the vision oh. node. It is TES who got control and can't dunk with the Baron. They're looking for exit kills, trying to get someone in a rotation. So in the end, nothing happens. <laughs> well, they, they, something happened. They burned all of the teleports here. Big cooldowns expended to make the counter uh, start up on the Baron. Pick onto Wayward at the very beginning. He goes in with the big flank, tries to get onto the onto the carries, but the flash from Style and then the instant handshake from BA gets and, him off. And that ward is so important because if that doesn't come through, maybe you get caught off guard. But uh, Style has his finger on the flash, and then this call by Gam to try and also turn this into a Baron while the entirety of top is standing at the ready, could have backfired immensely. Yeah, Gam had nothing left to make the turn off of Baron. So very dangerous to start up Baron when you don't have CC abilities to be able to chase people down and turn off it. Then they get poked here by Knight, and he dodges two flashes with his, with his flash. So two for one there, Levi as well as Kiaya. Oh! Basically a poke, Gold Void might have been done. It's, yeah, two thirds being everyone now. That might make this Drake playable. Jack is gonna go for healing off of the Grom. But 6,000 health, go. Sienna's around, can he fight it? Wayward puts the ulti on, will there be an engage? They're gonna be zoned down, smite it away. Levi gets their third Drake, but how's Wayward gonna do? Handshake backwards, 1k health, do they get the kill? Huge healing comes back in! Maybe they can find him, but he's still staying alive. Style barely takes him down. Does TES find the next fight though? Jackalup dives on in, they're gonna catch Levi, but he's handshake oh, Jack oh, but Jackie lives with Flash. TN gonna fight Marksman to Marksman, and will Will not go down. Jackie Love is still here. Style will heal off the wave. He's got a shield bow for lifesteal. Ooh, so close. Jackie on that Garthus body. He does end up living. The healing from Mark coming in clutch as they look for the chase. Knight gonna cut them off from mid lane. Health bars at least low, but there's no surprising CC. Maybe Katie on the wings gets the punches. The E is only as slow. The punch on Jackie won't kill him, but on a TM they go. Style, the Gore Trigger, the bailout is successful. One for one, though. Still and going. Yeah, top half the extra person chasing them down. As Style and BA get back to their own territory. Yeah. Oh, what a sequence of events there. Because top esports, if they got the kills there, Chakilov doing so, so much. Could have turned into a Baron, but in the end, Gam still gets that crucial soul point. Exactly. They get the dragon. They got the objective before the fight even broke out. Here's another look at it. They burn it down. Levi spamming it. Karthus cues. Rend available as well. Top waiting for their moment to go in. Kiaya dodges the first charm. Really nice moves there on Orn on the bottom side. And then ults to keep this isolated attempt onto Wayward's life. They burn down the Orn, and Wayward barely gets killed on the on the exit. And then oh, keep Jack your eyes love. on Jackie Love. Oh. Assassinates the Karthus, but gets handshake back onto the corpse. Oh. So very dangerous. One more Q there, almost takes him down. And then we get this extended fight where both teams very, very low, and Knight tries to go forward, is able Cute to... Katie. Yeah, is able to at least keep KD away, but crucially, KD draws so much attention that Tien is, in the end, going to get taken down. Bail out, keeps that Kalista alive. Now the Void Staff also done. Levi did lose his stacks on that Dark Seal. Knight also with the Death Cap. Huge. What a game. This game is so tense. Oh. And fighting for their tournament lives here to keep the hopes of Vietnam alive. And so doing would lock Rogue in the quarterfinals as well. You've got two fan bases. Shirin on the one side, TES though. Would love to have a better fighting chance at the top spot. Or even advancing in the first place there. 30 minutes in. Mountain Soul is two minutes away. Kiaya. Tanky enough now that, honestly, yeah, Death Dance doesn't do a whole lot against an Orn. That charm is big, though. You can see the kind of damage you can deal. Of course, Katie is built full tank and, in fact, rushed his first legendary item as a force of nature. He will survive Ari pretty easily, but everyone else is going to have a much worse fate. Yeah, tons of tenacity on him as well. Will not be stopped. This set will be making plays. On the other end, though, look at the amount of magic resistance that is available on TES. Already the lack thereof, it's only the Mercury Frets that you pointed out earlier, Kobe. Outside of that, 
It is a good time here. Oh. He dodged all the vision. Katie has to get Shirelia's out. That is a pretty important cooldown. The Rift thing has actually been very important for Gam in these fights. And Wayward still unseen, finally now spotted. Again, mid lane is so bad for Gam. It's too open. TES have all these flank angles. They're just poking them down and sustaining with the Nami heals. Yeah. And the poke has been really good from Lucian and the Ari ultimately. Grace pitching in once in a while there as well. He's actually put his own ult down. Levi has his with level 16, not there yet. What we are starting to see though is that the resistances that are given by these mountain drakes are adding up. Top esports though, they're not going to give Gam a second to rest. Start of the Baron again. Pretty fast again. Levi still not 16 off the blue buff. Got an ulti for the poke. And this could be a lot because Baron shreds your armor and MR. Mark going to take some of the honey fruit, slow down. Everyone's outside the pit. The Berserk hits nothing. But Orn might just zone out the team. A flash away from Nami. And TS can come right back into this one now. That That's all Gam's big ultimates though. They only have the Kalista and the set left. Oh, that was nearly the charm. That nearly could have been a possible kill on the KD. Levi back to farming, still trying to get the rank 3 ulti. Shorter cooldown, more base damage. 30 seconds now on the Mountain Soul, and they will not have any of these ultis up for it. Exactly. Now look at Knight with the Ari ultimate. Can go for the big pick. They've got vision control on mid lane. Looking for it again. Jackie. KD has hold the front line again. Shirelia is down. Let him kite away a little bit more. Another ulti for Poke from Tien. And Katie down to 1k HP, Knight on the side, Levi, yeah, flashes, he's like, I'm gonna get charmed, that would be me dead. And now a summoner down, not a lot of power left on this Karthus, actually. TES, I think, should feel very comfortable on this side of the map. Unless the Orn can't be killed, unless the front line's too good for him. Tien cuts out the wave, neither team can actually push, it's just the river. Kiaya, gotta be careful, top esports. Katie almost has flash, he has ghost now as well. And he went through fog. They don't know where he is. He gets some honey for the bottom side of the map. And they see, see a wayward. This could hurt a lot. He has flash to get away. Just about. It's up now. Well, I think time is good for Gam, though. Requiem getting closer yeah. to be available again. 20 seconds thereabouts. They can flip this. They're going to try with Rend and Spite. This could be Mountain Soul. He has probably to go early. So Orn hits the front line. Has to back out. Pretty good damage out of the Graves. And this fight's going to go early. Here comes the battle. What's it going to be with Orn? A huge shield out of Katie. Flashes out, and that is Dragon Soul secured. But is it enough? They get out of the pit. Requiem number two, and it's going to be a kill. Burn second from the Leandries. Sing, Levi, sing. The Requiem takes down two. They get the soul as well for Gam. And the crowd erupts. Listen to New York cheer. They love an upset. Gam Esports looking at that first win of Worlds. Oh, because with this setup, getting yourself the shield from that mountain soul. Uh, I just checked. This was previously to the fight. Levi was uh, at approximately 900 gold from his first strike. Um, right. After that, pretty sure it's going to be more as Baron now gets started up. Tien is still here, though. And Gam, a flip. Yeah. Exactly, because top esports, despite all this, still have a gold lead. Bit deceptive due to the Orn and due to the Mountain Soul, though. And just you wait until we get the level 16 plus death caps by oh, poor Levi. No. That is moments away from happening. 16, there it is. The Wolf Camp gives him rank through Requiem, cooldown lower, damage higher. Death cap still to an 1100 gold combined, doesn't have that yet. Kiaya rank guilty now as well. Vision on the Baron Pit, TES. Just been walking from midway to the top goal. and bottom river. They're gonna Where they help? They're pretty as fast as they can. Levi's not going to be in range just yet. Katie walks up. Baron is claimed. And it could be a clean escape. Wall of Pain goes down. Requiem not up just yet. And obviously no one is remotely low enough to die. That's huge for TES to be able to get that off the map during that small cooldown window where Levi does not have ult. Gamno, we need this Karthus power to be able to fight it. This time around, the fight around Dragon, look at the dunk. Katie dunks away Tien. So Tien is too far away from Dragon. And he preserved. flashes to try and get close, but it's just too far. Dunk into Renata ultimate, and then after they've already gotten the soul, the ult comes in, Karthus jungle claims another one. How can you not love that? How can you not love that, Kobe? Look at that! Yeah, pretty good. Turns out mages are pretty strong. Turns out feeding your jungler two levels above your mid laner works out pretty well. 
I, I wish everyone could see Kobe's face. He's not happy. Farming should not be ideal jungle gameplay. <laughs> so I do want to highlight though, with top esports getting this Baron, there isn't a real window for Gam. Hold up. I'm just gonna say he outganked TM in the early game there as well, Katie. Hold on the front line, Orin's gonna hit. Requiem will hit pretty hard as well, but not a kill just yet. He'll get back up. Orin finds the kill, one for one. As I was saying though, with the Baron being taken, top esports still have the pressure. And despite everything that has happened, without a decisive team fight victory, a Baron or an Elder Dragon, Gan haven't actually been able to break open the base of top esports at all. And if the Elder flip that I'm sure is gonna happen oh, yeah. in a minute or two is gonna come to fruition and top win that, then none of the compositional talk we've been talking about matters even remotely. Levi will definitely have his death oh, cap he ready for that one as well as he continues to clear out this last wave. Think he's got it. Gonna go back to the fountain now to purchase. There it is. He's got the combined money. A cleanse again away from style. The knockup is there. Requiem down though. Knight not enough in danger. Total HP with the Nami in the back pocket. Gonna be okay into that one. Able to walk back out again. It was jungle for mid lane. Katie has respawned. Tien just now back on the map. And we see some IMR being itemized just out of sheer necessity. Hex Drinker being picked up here for Jackie Love. He's had such a good game on the Lucian. Neither team really able to break the other. Yeah, Maz, the Maz is a huge, huge counter oh, yeah. this. In there a very go. good state as an item, very efficient. Gets the upgrade here. Will be ready for it. Banshee's Veil as well for Jack, uh, for Knight itemized and the stopwatch. So you've got a lot of counterplay here being purchased by the top esports players preemptively, getting ready for the big fight, a minute and a half away. 3,000 gold, double what you get from Baron itself, earned the Red Bull Baron power play. Looking pretty solid there. Honestly, the lead itself, the gold lead itself, I think is made up for the mountain Doesn't gold. matter. It's pretty close overall. These are yeah. about the same numbers, especially when you're buying things like, oh, it's doing about what a mountain does for you. Yeah, it's hit and miss in some places, but roughly similar. Bot lane outer drops to a minion push, four to five in turret. TES, I would say on average, have retained map control, but it's Gamma who has fought the team fights better. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be a 50-50 for the Elder. Surely that's what's about to happen here. I want blood, baby. I will definitely enjoy that. Flip it for your tournament Flip it live. for the win. <laughs> Presence with Elder Dragon does uh, some damage. Oh, I don't know. I think they didn't Hidden Crocodile. View. Yeah, but does it matter? Wayward now gets spotted on the wave. Kiaya sees Knight on the backside playing in front of a wake. Katie does not land the first stun. That is on cooldown. Jackie looking going to feel safe. Walking backwards. Trellius popped. Owen Horn goes in. They look for Mark. Early ulti from Karthus. Will they find a deletion? Set comes in. Doesn't find the kill. Jackie flashed the wave. Mark finally dies. And Kiaya, two taking the side. Got it. They got it. flashes in the burn. Oh, Wayward still alive with a GA. Kiaya gonna get chased down by Tien. I believe he'll actually die to the Graves. He's trying to run. Jackula pushed out. A flash, a flash to follow. They will trade kills two for one. And now it's Katie being caught out. Both mid laners will end up dead. No, he just barely lives. The bailout for move speed. Wayward has a GA, but can he live all the same? They're stalling though. They're buying time. It's only 14 seconds for Mark. 25 for Knight. That'll be GA though, and that'll be enough time that you can straight up 4v2 for the Elder Dragon. It's it, just about tracking Tien. Tien has smite. All right, let's see if you can make the miracle happen for top esports. Camera on, it's starting it up now. Here comes Jackie as well from base. This should Knight, be almost TP. impossible. Five this seconds. This should be almost impossible. It's got Rend and Smite. Katie can stun. They can turn for the kill. Dayton's dead. Yes, they go for Tien. They've got him on top of it. Styled is going for the kill, but he have the damage. Needs to Rend. Gets the shutdown. Whoa! Jackie Love steals the dragon. And with Elder, Knight goes off. B.A. left alone. Levi misses the most important Smite of his year. And it's going to be everyone dead for Gam. Live or die by Jackie Love. He comes up clutch and they get the Baron with, with the Helder Dragon buff. TS are going to finish. Kiaya is trying to clear the wave though using his Orn ultimate. Still a cannon available. Can but they do I, it? I don't, I don't know. Teleport coming in. They can keep the minion alive. He's still going to cut the wave. Oh, oh my god. He's dying to get the cannon off the Nexus turrets. He just needs Levi to respawn.
on. He's a junk man right now. He needs and to get, get, it, get it off of it. That'll get it off the backdoor bonus. I think it walked into range, but he is very tanky. He'll buy some time, and backdoor bonus will eventually fall. He'll die to Elder, but he bought enough time that I think Gam can live. Levi's have been one second, but the Levi. throw rolling with the new wave. The new wave with Katie. Getting fired in the stunts. Wayward still on it. Wayward still hit it. Both the death timers. These are not the maximum timers. These aren't the maximum timers. They're 50 at the very highest. I don't think they get the entire base. But they can try for something. The cheers. GAM erupt here in the Hulu theater. They will get a mid wave. But it is so hard to play with the Nexus turrets. If someone drops a ward in your base, double TP, the game just ends. 20 seconds on the carries coming from top. I think they got to back off and try to try to kill the Baron here, right? Not gonna get the end. They're, They're gonna, gonna try. try. They're teeping and try to end. It's ten on night, ten on Wayward, oh and we're going Nexus for the night. Will it be enough? Ten of them comes across. Tn hitting as hard as he can, looking for it now. On to the Nexus they go. Will it be the kill? Rogue were huge Gam fans, because this means Rogue has got to the quarters. But Gam are now Rogue fans. Rogue needs to 6-0, and Gam has to beat DRX. And everything has to go their way, and they can tie-break for getting out of this group. The dream is alive for Vietnam. The dream is alive. Well, I think we know what, is, uh, what has been the best game of the tournament thus far. <laughs> it was DK, JDG, but... I don't think anyone can argue, literally autos away from taking down that Gam Naxxus Kiaya stalls for long <laughs> enough. <laughs>